Global webcasting for a worldwide audience. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You're listening to Radio Lewis, where the music matters, and this is Saturday Live. Yes, I'm Ben Fuller. I'm back again. Sorry about that. You've got to put up the sound of my voice for the next two hours. Never mind, I've got some great music, and I've got some shameless self-promotion, and maybe even some interviews if you haven't heard them already. Let's just crack on with it, shall we? Just want a lover like any other What do I get? I only want a friend who stay to the end What do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? I'm in distress, I need a caress What do I get? Just need a break, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? I only get sleepless nights Along here in my heart Then the interest in the time I try So I wish that only happened to me Instead, what do I get? Oh, what do I get? Buzzcocks, what do I get? A single from 1978. Uh, it's the B-side of his oh shit. <laughs> and provided Buzzcocks with their UK chart debut, peaking at number 37 on the UK singles charts. We're going to follow that with Jesus Jones. <laughs> Yeah. 
Real, Real, Real from 1990. Uh, released as a single just ahead of the album Doubt. And that peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and at number 19 on the UK singles charts. Real, Real, Real was the second top 10 US hit and it also featured on the Happy Days compilation. As you can probably tell already, it's going to be a very uh, mixed playlist today. And now we've got a great cover of a Slade track.
And that was Quiet Riot from 1983 with their cover of Come On Fill The Noise from Slade, of course. Originally from 1973 as a standalone single written by uh, Noddy Holder and Jim Lee. It reached number one in the UK singles charts, giving the band their fourth number one single and remained in the charts for 12 weeks. The Quiet Riot version uh, did quite well in the States. Reached number five on the Billboard Hot 100 in November 1983 and helped their album Metal Health become a number one hit. I'm pretty sure that that caused some furious lyric checking by the BBC when that was released. Just guessing. This is a jam. <laughs> Favourites from the jam, Town Called Malice from 1982, from the album The Gift. Now I think we'll have one more, and then I'm going to bring you uh, one of the interviews I've recorded during this lockdown. And it's Frankie Goes to Hollywood. The air attack warning sounds like... This is the sound.
Two Tribes from 1984. A phenomenal success for Frankie Goes to Hollywood. It would eventually find its way onto the album Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, but that was their biggest ever hit. Spending nine weeks at the top of the UK singles charts, probably the longest running single of the 80s. And unlike a lot of songs that spend a million years at the top of the charts, it's not one that you wish would go away. It still sounds good. We all know that song from Wet Wet Wet. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now it's time for one of the interviews I recorded. Uh, obviously, we're in lockdown. I haven't been able to speak to our presenters in the studio. Some of them I've spoken to live on the Thursday live show. Others who weren't available, I sat down and recorded the interview. This is when I spoke to Cy Stonehouse. OK, as you know, I have been uh, talking to all the Radio Lewis presenters on the phone during Thursday Live to see how they're getting on and have a nosy into what they're doing. Unfortunately, Cy couldn't be available for the live show, so I've had to record it. Cy, good morning. How you doing, man? Good morning. I'm still alive, though. <laughs> well, that's the main thing. Yep, yeah, that's it, yep. Yeah. Uh, Rather than the recording. <laughs> we uh, mainly decided to vacate the premises to keep you safe. This is true. I'm very much appreciated. So you are still working, not only uh, running the paper shop and covering everybody that's either shielding or on holiday or whatever it is, but you're still running your own business. So how are yeah. you getting on? It's it, the the record side of it's gone really busy. It's uh, it's cold because everybody's sitting at home on their laptops with nothing to do. They're buying stuff from me, which is great. So, um, so you're I, taking everybody's money. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen my new fur coat? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better than the government having it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's good. Um, and it sort of it gets me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very um, much so. Yeah, it's it's, it's very much appreciated because like, I couldn't, if if you guys hadn't uh, have not gone in there, then obviously I couldn't have uh, run it. So, no. uh, but then I do, I do that in my spare time because I'm in the paper shop as well. Yeah, getting up horrendously early. <laughs> Horrendously. I pass your very your very doorstep at five o'clock in the morning most mornings. <laughs> five o'clock in the morning? Yeah, well, just before. I, 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 we have to be at the paper shop for half past five. Do you know what? Um, I, I make it a point never to see two five o'clocks in the same 24 hours. <laughs> well, I must, I must confess, at, uh, at the moment, I don't see the, the one in the afternoon that often because I fall asleep in the armchair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, I do, I'm, I'm watching lots of afternoon telly, which is very weird. It is very weird, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm getting very bored of afternoon telly. I'm having to come up with more and more ingenious ways of wasting it, time. It's something it, to be said when, like, you fin I finish at the paper shop and I'm I'm getting home so I can watch Father Brown. It's something wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching my clock. Going, oh, I've got to get home to watch Father Brown and then some idiot with antiques. You know, it's, yeah. it's weird. <laughs> So what about Radio Lewis? Are you still managing to record? I am still putting um, my own ones out, the size Sounds ones, of which there's a new one coming out this Wednesday. Um, but as for Pick and Mix, because we do it together, we can't do it. <laughs> and, so at um, the moment, there's lots of repeats. I suppose Nick is also working, isn't she? Because the schools she are is. open to key workers' kids. and That's it. She's having to, um, these the COVID tests twice a week as well. Is she so, well? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's well, yeah. She's as bonkers as ever, but yeah, she's very well. Good. And uh, a teacher head on. So, yeah, we, I sort of, our paths cross on a Sunday morning briefly, and that's it. You know, it's it's very strange. So there is no pick and mix at the moment. Oh, well, that is a shame. Well, give her our best from everybody at Radio Lewis. Yeah, so um, well, thank you. And as I've got the opportunity, what I would like to do is ask you to pick a track. Oh. You put me on a spot there, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's got, it's got to be David Bowie. And can it be Kooks from the Hunky Dory album? Yes, indeed. I will play that for you right after we play out this interview. So I thank you so much for giving me your time. I know you're very busy, and uh, we all hope to see you soon. Yeah, I'll just see you soon. We'll do some more live radio. Yes, I'm definitely missing my partner in musical crime. Yes, it's very weird, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so I thank you very much. Good to speak to you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Will you stay in a lover's story? If you stay, 
you won't be sorry, 'cause we believe in you. Soon you'll grow, so take a chance with a couple of kooks hung up on romancing. Will you stay in our love story? If you stay, you won't be sorry, 'cause we believe in you. Soon you'll grow. So take a chance with a couple of kooks hung up on romancing. We bought a lot of things to keep you warm and dry, and a funny old crib on which the paint won't dry. I bought you a pair of shoes, a trumpet you can blow, and a book of rules. What to say to people when they pick on you? 'Cause if you stay with us, you're gonna be pretty cookie too. Will you stay in our love story? If you stay, you won't be sorry. 'Cause we believe in you. Soon you'll grow, so take a chance with a couple of kooks hung up on romance. How they messed up this old fool. Don't pick fights with the bullies or the cats, 'cause I'm not much cop at punching other people's dads. And if the homework brings you down, then we'll throw it on the fire and take the car downtown. Will you stay in my love story? If you stay, you won't be sorry, 'cause we believe. Grow, so take a chance with a couple of kooks hung up on romancing. Will you stay in my love story? If you stay, you won't be sorry. Bowie there with the kooks picked by Sai from 1971. It appears on the album Hunky Dory. Um, it was a song he wrote to his newborn son, Duncan Jones. The song was a pastiche of early 1970s Neil Young because Bowie was listening to a Neil Young record at home <coughs> Excuse me, on the 30th of May, 71, when he got the news of the arrival of his son. Now we go back to the regular playlist, and this is a bit of Aerosmith. Let's go. 
Hangman Jury from 1987 from Aerosmith uh, released as a promotional single on the album Permanent Vacation. It's one of my favourite Aerosmith albums. That the background on this one is interesting. Hangman Jury is a reworking of an old blues song used by numerous artists over the years, particularly Lead Belly and Taj Mahal. The chant was based on the refrain "Whoa, boy, don't you lie in the tracker lacquer," which is often called "line in track" or "line em. A similar chant was used in um, Poor Boy Boogie by Mac Davis. Tyler received permission from Taj Mahal to use the refrain, thinking that he wrote it. However, he did not receive permission from Leadbelly. Tyler felt the song was a classic American chant dating back to the days of slavery and that it was public domain, meaning nobody actually owned it. However, Leadbelly recorded it. He claimed ownership of the song and subsequently... Led Belly's estate sued Aerosmith about a year after Hangman Jury was released. I don't know what the outcome of that was. It's a great tune nonetheless. And it made it to number 14 on the mainstream rock tracks chart in the States and stayed there for weeks. This is Saturday Live here on Radio Lewis where the music matters. I'm Ben Fuller. More music now.
from 1974. Backman Turner Overdrive there with You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. Written by Randy Backman. And on the album Not Fragile from the same year. Released as a single with an instrumental track freewheeling on the B-side. It reached number one position on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts and the Canadian RPM charts the week of November 9th, 1974 as well in well as earning the band their only major single in the UK, peaking at number two on the UK singles charts. They also scored a minor hit in the UK with Rolling Down the Highway. Now we're going to carry on with more great music, and this time, oh, it's one of my favourite rock acts, it's Blackstone Cherry. Man from 2008, that's the lead single from the album Folklore and Superstition, the second studio album by Blackstone Cherry, and I'm very pleased to tell you that that um, stormed straight to the top of the UK album Rock Charts in its debut week. It's a great album. That's the first song of Blackstone Cherry's I heard. It was on one of those Battle of the Bands things on a music channel, I think it was Scuzz. And they were up against Bon Jovi, so it was no contest really, was it? Sorry Bon Jovi, you... just the way it is. 
Coming back to this side of the pond now, this is Blur. from 1994 from the album Park Life and that did well on the charts uh, reaching number 5 here in the UK 
and it was their first top five hit after their most successful single, Until Country House reached number one the following year. Like a bit of blur now and again, I haven't heard that in quite a while. We're going to carry on with the music. Uh, we've got about ten minutes before the halfway point of this show. This is a classic from Credence. <coughs> Wonderful Bad Moon Rising from 1969 from an album that is now over 50 years old, Green River. It do not sound it, does it? It still sounds fantastic. It peaked at number two on the Hot 100 in uh, June 69 and reached number one on the UK singles charts for three weeks in September the same year. I love that track. It's fantastic. Bit of devil skin now, all the way from New Zealand.
Fall Down from Devil Skin from their 2020 album Red. They're a four piece alternative metal band from Hamilton in New Zealand, formed in 2010. And that was their first uh, album in a, three or four years. It was uh, delayed for obvious reasons by the uh, coronavirus pandemic. We're going to follow them with another great band that I've learned to love ever since I introduced them to me. It's Greta Van Fleet. And when the curtain falls, it was the lead single off their debut album, Anthem of a Peaceful Army. In November 2018, it reached number one on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart. I do like a bit of Greta Van Fleet. Now we're going to finish this hour with level 42.
Lessons in Love there from 1986. It was the band's biggest single in the UK. It reached number three on the UK singles charts. Internationally entering the top ten in numerous countries, reaching the number one spot in five of them. Spain, Germany, South Africa, Switzerland and Finland. You're listening to Saturday Live here on Radio Lewis, where the music matters. I'm Ben Fuller and we're into the second hour and I've got another great hour of music. It's another mix, mix mash. Uh, Mix mash, miss mash. I don't know. I'm I'm gibbering now, aren't I? I'm going to put a stop to that because I'm going to play you the second of the interviews I've got for you today. And this time it's Ian McClucky of our latest show, Electronic Eighties. And after you've heard this, I'm sure you'll agree that you have much better things to be doing on a Thursday than uh, talking to me. So we had to record this one as well. Here it is. I'm very happy to say I have got our newest. Presenter on the phone, Ian McClucky, how are you? Hello there, I'm fine Ben, thanks. Now you've only joined us at the tail end of last year, so uh, you came to us just before the November lockdown, so you didn't get started till December, and then we're back well, in lockdown me. again. Yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, you've managed to record at home so quickly, but I'd like you to... Uh, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I'm um, by trade, I'm a mental health nurse. I came down south from Glasgow in 1987, so I've been down here for about 30, well, coming up for 34 years now. Um, I think I've lost my accent a little bit, um, so people can understand me slightly better. <laughs> um, but um, on the whole, I've been working in mental health for the last 33 years. I retired from mental health in the end of August of last year. Um, that was quite nice retiring. It was quite nice for a little bit of time. Um, but I was obviously looking for something else to do. And um, this, this came along and I thought I was quite interested in maybe doing um, a little show on Radio Lewis. So I decided I'd have a go. And then in between times, of course, we had the epidemic coming along and lockdown again. And then we had the, the vaccinations doing. So the, I was asked back to do the vaccinations, which I'm currently doing at the moment at the Princess Royal. Well, I am... Um... I've got so much admiration for you, I, I have to say. I mean, mental health nursing in itself is probably one of the hardest uh, yeah. and most underfunded departments yeah. of the NHS. But you are still finding time to make your fantastic show, Electronic 80s. Yes, I am. Yep. Along uh, with stepping into the breach to do the vaccinations. Uh-huh. That's right. I, I, I can't tell you how much admiration I have for you. I think it's amazing. And so it's, it's something I enjoy doing, both, actually. I quite enjoy going back to doing the vaccinations. At the moment, we're vaccinating the healthcare staff, so it's, it's just staff only, so it's all care homes and NHS staff from the, the cleaners of the hospital wards, so all the way through to catering to, you name it, if you're in, in the frontline healthcare, I'm giving you your job up at Haver Teeth at the moment. Well, I, I think that's brilliant. It's about time to. Um, so, with a bit of frivolity, tell us about Electronic 80s. Yeah, I mean, I was born in the mid-60s, um, so obviously I was 14, 15, probably 1980. So that was the sort of music I sort of grew up with at that time. Um, the sort of anything, really, in the 1980s. And I know I've played a lot of UK indie stuff, um, but I actually could play anything, um, and I quite enjoy playing anything. And some of the times you will hear me play anything, much to people's I either love it or hate it, um, but that's the whole point of it, I think. Um, so it's the stuff I've got and other little bits I've got on vinyl, and I think I've managed to work out how to put things onto vinyl now, hopefully that you can't get anywhere else, um, put on to, um, and put, play it on the show if I can. So that's that sort of stuff that I, I like playing, and uh, hopefully the feedback seems to be quite good at the moment, so I'll carry on doing it. Well, it's a brilliant show. I love 80s music. I grew up with the 80s as well. Uh, um I try personally to steer away from Stock Aitken and Mormon, but that's what I do do. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm not that bothered actually. I love anything from the eighties. Yeah, and I'm I'm so pleased that you came and joined us because we didn't have an eighties show, and I was doing far too many. And I think uh, if I started sure. doing another one, people would get very sick of the sound of my voice. So, thank you for that. Now then, yeah, uh, right. I ask all of my guests. Normally, if I've got you live. I've got a playlist organised and uh, I ask you to pick one. But as I'm having to record this today, because you're going to be so busy on Thursday, I'd like you to pick a track that we can play out. 
Oh, OK, let's let's go up to Glasgow then and let's pick um, Labour of Love by Hue and Cry. Hue and Cry, Labour of Love, it is. Yeah. Ian, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for what you're doing. That's all right. I'll, I'll carry on doing it for as long as I need to. Ian, thank you. I'll speak to you soon. OK, thanks, Ben. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Cry, released in 87 as a second single from their debut album, Seduced and Abandoned. It remains their only significant hit, peaking at number six on the UK singles charts. I've no idea why that was. I think they're brilliant. Now, as I said, I'm sure you'll agree that Ian had much better things to be doing than talking to me on a Thursday, and my thanks again to him and everybody else who's uh, signed back onto the NHS uh, to help out with the vaccination program, along with all the regular staff who are working their socks off. I'm very pleased to say that both Dawn and I have had our first vaccination. Uh, so my thanks also to everybody down at River Lodge Surgery in Lewis for doing a sterling job. It was all over very quickly, and uh, I didn't feel a thing, thankfully, and all I've had is a slightly bruised feeling in the arm. So if you know anybody who's hesitating over taking up an invitation for a vaccine... As gently as you can, please try and persuade them. It really is that important, and we're never 
going to get back to any sort of semblance of uh, normal life if we can't get on top of this horrible virus. Public service announcement over. Back to the music. Duran Duran from 1987, Skin Trade, the second single from the Notorious album, and the band's 15th single in total. Released in January 87, reached number 22 on the UK singles charts and number 39 on the Billboard Hot 100. Now we're going to carry on. A band I don't play very often on a live show, but I do love them. It's Cinderella.
Cinderella, Long Cold Winter, the title track to their second studio album from 1988. And that one made number 10 on the Billboard 200 album charts. More music from Guns N' Roses. You were young and your heart was an open book. You used to say live and let live. This ever changing world in which we live in makes you give in and cry. Say, live and let die.
Living That Die, of course, the theme song to the 73 Bond film of the same name. Upon its release, it was the most successful Bond theme up to that point. Reached number one on two of the three major US charts. That was Guns N' Roses, of course, uh, with their cover. Uh, from Use Your Illusion. Uh, released as a second single from the 91 album. And commercially successful and nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance at, at the 35th Annual Grammy Awards in 93. They recorded that simply because they both liked it, but didn't know they both liked it. There's a bit of useless information for you. Music now from King Mob.
Goose Chasing Who, King Mob from 2011's Force 9, an album that everybody should know about, very few do unfortunately. From King Mob to Cobra and the Lotus. And the Lotus from 2015, Words of the Prophets, is the name of the EP by the Canadian heavy metal band. It consists of cover songs as a tribute to the Canadian bands that the members of Cobra and the Lotus grew up listening to. And, uh, of course, that was originally by Alanya Miles. Uh, there's a beautiful video for that, premiered by uh, Revolver magazine. Now then, I've, only, I've got less than half an hour to go. Internet's twitchy, so I'm going to have to stitch this back together for you later on. But I think it's time for the last of the interviews I've got for you today. And it's the Music Factory's Peter Kozmarski. I'm very pleased to say I've got one of our newest presenters on the phone right now. Peter Kozmarski, how the devil are you? I'm good, Ben. I'm really, really good. It's good to speak to you, uh, even though I haven't seen you in the flesh for a little bit of time. It has been a while. Um, yeah, no, it certainly has. Now, when did you join Radio Lewis? Oh, Radio Lewis, it's, it's got to be four or five months now, Ben. Um, so I still feel a little bit of the newbie, even though Ian's uh, Electronic 80s is uh, the newest addition to the station. Um, yeah, I was introduced to Lewis Radio by Lisa Lyles from the A&E show. 
um, who's a good friend of mine, um, and she suggested I come over, um, see what was going on, and 18 shows later, here I am. So, yeah, I mean, I really enjoy digging out all the old stuff and new stuff to play. Um, so, yeah, really enjoying it. Excellent. And I am very pleased to say that you have started recording at home. I have started. Uh, I have started recording at home. Uh, as you know, I had a few uh, technical issues right at the beginning uh, of lockdown, uh, setting up the home studio. Uh, I, I had to bin a couple of shows, but I'm, I'm back up and running now. Uh, and the show goes out on Sundays uh, at nine uh, a.m. And I'm really glad to be back on air. But I do miss coming into the studio a bit. I must admit. Yeah, it's not quite the same, is it? It isn't quite the same. No, I miss all the faces and the banter, really. And and your show is the Music Factory. It is a Music Factory, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I went to school with a bunch of us. Went to school in the uh, in, in the late seventies, and we pretty much missed the first wave of punk. Uh, but we were lucky enough to catch all the bands which were influenced by it. Um, so it was just an explosion of new bands at the time, really. Uh, and they were just releasing new material sort of week on week. Um, we could go to a different venue and see a band every day. Uh, of the week back then. So I'm, I'm trying to bring a bit of that into the music factory, really. Brilliant, because live music is something we're all sorely missing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I can't actually remember the last time I saw a live gig. No, do you know what? I can't remember the last live gig. I did. Can I remember the last gig? Do you know, I can't. I really can't. But I'm looking forward to the next one. I can assure you of that. Yeah, likewise, I'm sure. So... You know, we're, uh, everything's been disrupted. We're not in the studio. How are you coping with lockdown in general? Well, I'm, I'm, I suppose, like a lot of people, really, Ben. Um, I mean, it's just sort of lockdown upon um, lockdown, and it's been a crazy year for everyone. Um, but I, I, I feel as though we're sort of hopefully getting to the uh, the, the end of it now, and, and, and maybe we'll see a little bit more of the sort of normality. Um, it'd be good to get society moving again, get people back to work, and stop all this suffering. But, but like you said, go and see some live music as well. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Peter, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, would you be so kind as to pick a track for the show? Uh, yeah, I will do, actually. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a big Joy Division fan, as you know, Ben, and uh, I'll vividly remember the release of their debut album, Unknown Pleasures, in uh, 1979. Um, it was a completely new sound to me, and it was uh, quite, quite a profound effect on a 16-year-old. Um, I think it sounds as good today as it did for over four years ago. Um, and uh, I think it would be appropriate to, you know, debut album, track one, side one, and that song would be Disorder. Disorder is by Joy Division. Peter, thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. Great speaking to you, Ben. You take care. You too. Thank you very much.
she takes hold, then you know. Until the spirit new sensation takes hold, then you know. Until the spirit new sensation takes hold, then you know. Peter's pick Disorder from Joy Division from their debut studio album Unknown Pleasures released on the 15th of June 1979 by Factory Records uh, they didn't release any singles from Unknown Pleasures and the album didn't chart despite the relative success of the non-album single Transmission still it's um, been uh, received uh, with sustained critical acclaim as an influential punk post-punk album been named one of the best albums of all time by publications such as Enemy, All Music, Select, Rolling Stone and Spin that is uh, not to be sniffed at going back to the regular playlist now this is The Animals leastways it would be if the damn thing would work I'm going to find another track from uh, whatever I've got kicking around here and uh Let's try that one.
In People, and moving on up from 1993, the second single from the second album, Elegant Slumming. The song peaked at number two on the UK singles charts and was the biggest selling M People single. The song also became a top 40 hit on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the Billboard Dance Chart. Now hopefully I've sorted out my technical malfunction and this should be the animals. <laughs> The House of the Rising Sun, and that was from 1964 by The Animals, originally a traditional folk song, sometimes called Rising Sun Blues, and The Animals had a number one hit in the UK singles charts for that, and also in the US and France, as a traditional folk song recorded by an electric rock band. It's been described as the first uh, folk rock hit. 
Now I'm running out of time, but I want to get a couple more in. This should be Susie Quattro. Devilgate Drive from 1974. That spent two weeks at the top of the uh, UK singles charts. It was also her last solo number one here in the UK. And this year she has another new album out. Uh, With her son playing drums, The Devil in Me should be released in March. Time for one more. And I think it's going to be Was Not Was Walk the Dinosaur. This has been Saturday Live. I've been Ben Fuller. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to leave you with Was Not Was. Until next time, stay safe. Ta-da.
Radio Lewis. Local. Community. Community. Webcasting.